I wanted to make a movie about that relationship, uh, which I hadn't seen in a movie before, about you know this sort of shy gay kid um, finding his voice through uh, an extroverted slutty girl. So when I wrote the script, I wrote nine of her songs into the movie. So I wrote this fan letter to her, no, telling her that I was doing this. I was making this movie that was an homage to her and her music. And I just wanted her to know I needed her permission, I needed to use her likeness. So I wrote this, uh, I wrote this really scary, in retrospect, sort of scary fan letter to her. And uh, didn't, not surprisingly, I did not get a response. It fell out of the sky. <laughs> I, received, um, I received a script from Abe Sylvia, the writer-director, and um, I started reading this beautiful, beautiful, joyful script, and I started noticing titles of my songs strewn effortlessly throughout the script. It's a celebration of, in many ways, the great Melissa Manchester, who I was uh, and am a massive fan of. Uh, and I kept pushing my luck with her. Uh, first, uh, I said, you know, can I use your image? And then I said, can you help me clear, don't cry out loud, which she did. And then I said, will you do a cameo in the movie, which she does. She intros, don't cry out loud. Uh, she's at the piano uh, before the kids start to sing. And uh, then I said, will you write an original song for it? And um, she says, you know, she and Mary said, we, we, we'd like to do this together. And it, it wouldn't have ever dawned on me in a million years that I would end up knowing her, much less writing music with her. In the movie, I play the mother of a young boy, Clark, who um, is uh, gay and uh, who is really brutalized um, by my husband, played by Dwight Yoakam, for that very fact. And um, his world um, it has really shrunk um, to his room and his music, which is Melissa Manchester. And through Melissa Manchester, he can travel, he can be who he is, he can feel important, he can feel empowered and she is his ticket to the world. Clark leaves the story for a good uh, 20 minutes of the film. We've had all this Melissa music kind of underscoring Clark's journey, and so it seemed only right that when he leaves her, he leaves her with this song that is written by the two most important women in his life, his mother, <laughs> Mary Steenburgen, and Melissa Manchester. Um, Juno's character is um, a little well, she is lost, and her heart has been broken, and it's hard for her to figure out what her way is going to be. Yeah, what I said was, I want it to be about that moment where you know something in your life is about to change. We all have those moments where we have these epiphanies. It's like, my journey is about to shift. What I didn't know about Mary at the time, obviously I know she's an Oscar-winning actress, and and you know, flawless in, in all of her performances. And what I, what I didn't know about Mary is that she is a songwriter. She's a really accomplished songwriter. And she said this to me at our first meeting. I am constantly writing music. I write for Universal Music Publishing Group. I write a lot in Nashville. I have a, a cut that just came out on Matresa Burke's beautiful album, Dreaming Fields. And um, she and I wrote a song on that together called Fall Again. Um, I just wrote two songs for uh, pilot for FX, um, and uh, wrote one of those with Shooter Jennings, Waylon's son, who I love, and the other with Troy Virgis and Hilary Lindsay, who were nominated for Golden Globes and Oscars last year for Country Strong. Mary Steenburgen and I had actually um, written a song together uh, that had nothing to do with Dirty Girl. And bizarrely, um, I had just finished writing my first song with her the day before I read the script for Dirty Girl. And Mary's name was in the script, and my music was in the script, and I called Mary and I said, did you read the script? And she called me back and she said, did you read the script? You're all over it. You're, you're writing music with Melissa Manchester. Melissa Manchester is like one of your, you know, the heroes of your life. And here you are getting to do this. And so uh, I just, put my attention on that and we wrote a wonderful song together. 
And so Abe had sent me this montage that he created, and I just watched it over and over and over. And I was sitting at my piano, and as I was watching it, the mood of it, the mood of the, the motion of the camera started to uh, stir up uh, music in me, and the music became this, this melody, and as I started to, to play the melody and I kept watching the montage, the melody just kept developing and opening and opening, and I hadn't had that experience in a really long time, and by the time I sent that melody, that completed melody to Mary, she just threw her lyrics on it. It was just, it was just magic, it was fantastic. The second I heard it, uh, all these beautiful questions started flying into my head, and together we just wrote a song I really like. The, um, the lyrics that Mary had written were very uh, suggestive and evocative, um, and so uh, I took the opportunity to do some, you know, coloring with the orchestra uh, along, you know, some of the images that she suggested in the lyrics. Uh, and, and working with Melissa was, was amazing. Um, all, all I really needed to do was support her performance and stay out of the way um, and, uh, and just really uh, you know, widen out the, the, the sound spectrum of the song. We need to now weave this into uh, the fabric, the musical fabric of the film. And so he, he brought in our, our 32 uh, string players uh, to to fill out the orchestration and then throughout he added touches of the steel pedal guitar which, which had become uh, a motif throughout the film. You know as an interpreter of songs what you try to do is capture the inner life and convey that to an audience in, in my performance for instance but what Jeff did was that he brought all of the, the feelings through his orchestration of longing of from the highs to the lows, the, the jaggedness of being a teenager uh, in the most beautiful way. And um, it, just, uh, it just brought the song to life. I was thrilled working with him. Were you ever asked if you wanted to learn to play the violin? And it had, it's a symbol of, were you ever offered magic? Were you ever offered worlds beyond what you know? Were you ever um, given a chance to be everything that you could be? Uh, and when did you murmur to your pillow that love was bound to leave you in the end? Um, and I think it so goes to the heart of Danielle's character. It's so much of the way she behaves in her life is that she's given up on this idea that she could be, she doesn't know what it means to feel real love or she doesn't know uh, how to wrap her arms around it when it appears to her. Um, and the song, the song is telling her that, that no, that's not the case. And in the last line, love will come, but not in the form that she expects. She's, she's going after this, this idea of a father, um, uh, played by Tim McGraw, and uh, he'll never be able to fulfill that. But as soon as you hear the lyric, love will come, she, the door opens and Mila Jovovich is standing there, her mother. And we're saying, no, 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 this is where the love is. You weren't able to recognize it, but here it is. Were you ever asked if you wanted to play the violin? Uh, so that suggested, you know, we could bring the, the strings in, into play uh, quite early. You, you stand to win it all. My love, yes you, you stand to win the moon, the sun, and love will come to you. I'm blessed that my life offered up such an interesting second act, and uh, that it included getting to work with people like Abe Sylvia and Melissa Manchester. Ooh. Mm -hmm.